Okay, so this is the last video where we are going to be designing something for this landing page. The last, last video is going to be the one where we are going to make it responsive. I'm gonna, probably that video is going to be pretty long, but I'm gonna skip over some of the parts because let's face it, it's not that interesting. So I'm gonna speed them up. You're gonna see how I'm working, but I'm gonna speed them up. We are going to be designing the footer and it's going to be, I'm going to say simple. Yeah, we're gonna keep it simple, but we're gonna add an element. Of course, it's going to be GSAP. And as you scroll on uh, the page to reach the end of the page, the logo or the name of the website is going to come in like a stagger effect. And I've done this before, like at the beginning of this channel, when I just started using GSAP. But this time we are going to be using the split type GSAP plugin because now it's available for us to use. So we're going to use that one. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to go pretty fast over this uh, because I don't want to hold you too long. So let's get into it. All right, so let's go first back in our Elementor uh as you remember, we're building this on the hosting, yeah, on uh, Elementor hosting. So I want to go uh, inside the dashboard and let's have a quick look here to see what we have. I want to check the backups because they're supposed to be doing backups every day. Yeah. So let's see. So backups happen at the time that I requested, I think. Let me just go back to, let's go to manage backup time, afternoon. Okay that is ah this is my local time okay so uh, i need to select my uh, my my time zone so this is my time zone okay wait we're changing it anyway so from now on it will happen according to my time zone anyway so i think we're good here yeah and as you can see we have backups up to and uh, from 12 of august so if you have had issues with the website with a hosting website then you can go and back up or you can get a download link to your email and you have more actions here where you can rename it or delete it okay all right so this is an overview we have uh, not connected yet a custom domain i tried to do that the other time two times or three times ago uh but there was a little error i have to redo this but i'm not gonna do it on camera you've seen how this goes so it's very easy let's go into our project okay so i am going to go in the back end of my website and i'm gonna access the theme builder here because we're going to be building the um footer okay as you can see i already have the footer so i'm gonna just go over it to show you what i did okay let me let me go to edit and you will see i actually have imported a, a template from elementor okay because i didn't want to waste any time there are plenty of templates that you can add uh, footers from and then you can actually customize them however you want i think that speeds time uh, speeds up your process and um you don't waste time you know especially if you want to move fast and do like a couple of iter iterations to see what works and what doesn't work so as you can see we have the name of my studio my agency yeah it looks like it's uh not fitting in here but it does fit so i have chosen i've seen we've seen this on many many websites and i actually have here a website that i will share in the description below wait it's designed i have discovered this um some years ago when i was more active on twitter and you can see that you can get any footer style you want so let's go to animate it okay so this is kind of a standard by now where you have a big font big text of the logo of the name of the website of the business as as you can see yeah it's nothing unique but it's about the the um how you uh, execute it okay so if i go to this one let's say yeah let's see how this works okay so this is the actually the home page let's see the footer probably is the same or similar yeah it doesn't have any effect except for this effect i actually wanted to do something similar but there was no time so i think this is pretty cool i it gives the website such a unique uh vibe and it makes it more expensive in my opinion yeah 
and for example i have not checked this one so i'm gonna go and have a look there are so many examples that you can take from here from this website and they add the best of the best and it is run by a group of designers with many years experience oh, that did you see that um with many years of experience yeah um i think they're from the netherlands and you know people from the netherlands are really good at design let's have another look let me just go slower a bit How cool is this, right? Anyway, I'm not gonna go through everything here because we would be on this website for some time. I just want to check this one, okay? Because it has kind of the vibe of our website. And, okay, super nice, super nice. Oh, this is super nice. Okay, cool. This is fully g -sapped. Oh, I love it. I had the impression that I don't like these websites anymore, but by now I still I, I still like them. There's something about a good GSEP design. Um, oh, this is a lot. Where are we? Okay, so okay, so this is how it comes. Yeah, I do like it. I think it's pretty good. It's very interesting, right? And it's not that it's like a crazy design or anything like that. Just a small ooh. That was smooth. Maybe we can make something like this. Uh-huh. Okay, so I'm full of ideas now. Anyway, let's go back to our design, okay? So, let me just open this. And I'm not gonna go over this part where the actual footer is. I'm just gonna go to our uh, container here where I have the heading. So. I actually added the heading because if you add an image or an SVG, for example, it's not going to work. Okay. Because it needs to be, um, to have characters to have, unless you want it just to be a reveal, not really a stagger, so just like the text comes out that can be done as well, but I wouldn't, I don't know. In this case, I think it's good to stick with the heading and you can also add a link to it. You go here to layout, additional options, and new navigate to HTML tag and go and choose the link. Yeah, so you can add the, for example, the link to, uh, to your uh, site URL. Yeah, so basically that's exactly what it is. Uh, the logo, uh, I, that's where it's going to lead. Anyway, so let's not focus on that. Let me show you our code here. So I put a code in an HTML uh, widget, obviously, and it is right at the end. Okay, always at the end. So there's not much to explain really here. Um, the only thing that you could change or if you want to change are the staggered, the duration, the ease, basically the, the animation of how this comes out and that's it so we have this footer heading class okay this is a must to be added to our heading okay because this is what will trigger the animation once you reach uh the the heading that's when the animation starts because we have this um class otherwise it's not gonna work just in case it doesn't work just know that that is the the reason okay and i will also remove this but i want you to see them uh, as i demonstrate on the front end okay and as you can see we have here the heading class as well make sure that if you change it change it here change it here and also change it in your heading widget class all right, so let me just open this a little bit. As you can see, we have the CDNs for the split text, which is a GSAP, as you see here, a GSAP plugin. So we're trying to use every GSAP plugin that we have available by now from GSAP because it's free and we can use them. So we don't have to try different packages to try to make them work with GSAP, okay? Anyway, a lot of talk let's go <laughs> to the landing page so i'm just gonna go here and i'm gonna refresh it there are some things that 
Uh, there's actually one of the effects it's not really working anymore uh, for whatever reason I don't know and I'll show you which one so this is basically also a recap of what we have so far yeah okay everything works so far everything is good I also want to add some sort of crawl animation to this image because it's very big and by the time you scroll over it's like it's too much so I want to have it I don't know but I'm not gonna show that necessarily on uh, another video because that would be like stretching this video too long it's this video series and I'm sure you're bored by, by now anyway so I'm gonna continue scrolling this works as well yeah and this is the one that doesn't work anymore and I cannot understand why I cannot it might be something just hit me I will try to fix it off camera in a bit and then I will come back but in the meantime let's continue let's continue okay this came in very fast all right okay we still need to make some changes here because yeah anyway not perfect voila but we are having some issues here all right that works okay that works hmm interesting all right, so let's scroll, let's scroll, let's scroll, and voila. And I think this is, um, it keeps the website unique as well as still interacting, interactive until the very end. And it's just nice, you know, it's just like that little thing that you add to a website. If you want to change uh, the timing of this interaction, we can start the interaction basically from here, amended. And let me just go back. So these are the markers that I was talking about. You see one here. Yeah, it's this one green. Yeah, start and it ends here. Yeah. Um, let me just go back to my start point so I could change this to 50 okay let's see what happens and where the marker is and keep in mind that these markers can be deleted from here okay you just simply go delete fully so let's refresh so as you can see the scroll start is here instead of here at the bottom so it's in the middle of our page viewport yeah so let me just scroll so start and boom i think it's a little bit better i'm not sure yet but but you can experiment with this okay as you see every time i scroll to the footer and back reverse the animation takes place you could also have this basically turned off and just have it uh, happen once and I will have the code for both so what I will do I will remove this basically do this yeah it's removed you're not gonna see it on the front end and basically just remove this as well and activate this one okay and it says once true and it will happen only once if you go you scroll past it back in reverse it will not trigger anymore the effect this is pretty good if you don't like this yeah some effects should not happen all, every single time the page is scrolled yeah so that's one time let's see if it works and as you see we don't have the markers anymore so let me just scroll boom it's done so you have choices and that's about it next time we are going to have this done responsively it's going to be, as I said, probably quite a long video, uh, but some portions of it will be explainers, maybe a little bit more. Some of them will be fast forwarded. So, you know, the boring stuff, just fast forwarded, but kind of, I want to show you some, like some of my process, I guess, because we all do things differently. And I think it's nice to see behind the scenes of optimizing a website, I guess anyway so that's that's the video for today uh i will have the code in the description below of course this you can use separately on any website you want you can add it whatever you want but keep in mind that this has been optimized to work uh at the bottom of the page okay 
you might have to work it if you don't know how to code or you don't understand this you can ask ChatGPT. Uh, be very precise about in your prompt very uh, be very precise about what you want to achieve with it yeah and it's going to give you an, a start as we have now basically we have this start yeah and it's going to give you an end as well so you might also mention this to ChatGPT. Um, I want to add this in the middle of the page or whatever. Uh, please um, give me the start and the end of this animation. You know, whatever. Anyway, I hope this was uh, useful. I think it is useful because I see this effect still going strong. It has been around for like the last two, three years. And I think it's not too much, not too little. It's just the perfect amount of spice to any footer. So no boring footers. Now I'll add the footer inspiration uh, website in the description below because I think that is pretty cool. And footers, you know, they're so kind of difficult to design, you know. So that's it. If you'd like to see what else you can build with Elementor, watch this playlist here or here. And if you have gotten any value out of this video, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.